Welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sepovas. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, and language, and share stories from our listeners. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll encourage you to dig deeper to learn about your Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll have thought-provoking conversations and share resources. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. Welcome to this episode of the Hungarian Living Podcast. Today, I'm visiting with Tunde from Tunde's Creation. You may remember that Tunde and I visited in Season 1, Episode 5, and talked about traditional Hungarian Christmas treats. And today, we're going to talk about some upcoming classes that Tunde will be teaching. Welcome, Tunde. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be back. Yes, it's great to have you back on the podcast again. We recently spent a weekend baking and decorating Mezesh Kalaj cookies together, and it was super fun. Good to be in your presence because we don't get to be in each other's presence very often. So instead of just face to face on Zoom, it was nice to be with you. So that was awesome. I always learn so much from you, and I'm excited about the upcoming cooking and baking classes because while I can make all these recipes on my own, it is always so enlightening to walk through a recipe with you and have you be in on the process from start to finish. One of my favorite things about being in our classes is that I always learn so much more than just the recipe itself. You do a great job of troubleshooting if any of us run into problems, even when you aren't actually in our kitchens. So it's fun to learn traditional Hungarian foods from someone who is a patient cook. And some of the things you make aren't things that my mom made. And since she isn't here for me to visit with, I really appreciate your tips and tricks. So let's talk about the first thing we will make together. So the first Saturday of March, we will make palacinta. And if you are not familiar with this Hungarian word, it's uh, the Hungarian version of uh, crepes that the French make mostly as a dessert. So they put butter and sugar in the recipe. The Hungarian recipe usually don't have butter or sugar because we use this recipe for sweet and savory food as well. And we will make two sweet and two savory recipes at uh, at this upcoming class. Okay. And so while we're together, we're going to actually end up with at least four different variations of the palacinta. Yes. The two, okay. Okay. And yes. two of them will be uh, the very famous Hortobagi Palacinta and Gundel Palacinta. Hortobagi Palacinta is the one you make with chicken paprikash. It's a savory recipe that most uh, most restaurants serve offer as appetizer. But uh, in my house, it was a complete meal because it's very filling sure. and. And it's it's a wonderful recipe. And uh, Gundel Palacinta, which is a fancy dessert, it has a walnut filling and a chocolate sauce on top. And in re- fancy restaurants, they will even put some alcohol on top and uh, light it up and it comes in flames. <laughs> to your oh, table. fun. Okay. We so probably, we'll learn how to- we, we will probably not light it up during the class. <laughs> but you'll teach us how if we want to. Yeah, I can tell you how. Okay. <laughs> I don't okay. want okay. anybody to burn down their kitchens. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> so, and and for those of you who are participating in the Let's Cook Hungarian Challenge, if you are having hesitation about you know, working with Palacita, which is the February recipe, then if you take this uh, Palacita class, it'll count as your Palacinta for offering for February, even though the class is technically, it's happening in March, but we'll make an extension if you want to jump in and learn this. And for those of you who regularly make Palacinta, this is a great opportunity to widen how you serve it, since there's going to be so many different options. And we'll make both the sweet and the savory versions. And even though, you know, Palacinta is great, you could just put a little preserves in it and go, but it really for all that work, it, it's nice for it to last longer than somebody just eating 10 palacita for fun. They could, it could actually be a bigger picture meal and, and 
presentation can be beautiful and instead of just super fast eating and nobody can keep up with making all the palachinta because everybody just sucks them down. I love palachinta because it's so flexible and especially with the recipe that doesn't include sugar, which is what we have also encouraged people to to find a recipe that you could live with that doesn't include sugar so that you can use it for both the sweet and the savory. So, and what's coming up in April? In April, we will prepare the Hungarian goulash that, of course, American and the whole world calls Hungarian goulash. We call it Marha Perkert. And this is a beef stew made with onions and paprika. And this is also the base of the goulash soup that we will make later on. Okay. And what are the dates for the April? Uh, the cool. April class is uh, April 10th. That's the second Saturday of April. Okay. And this this is a great basic meal to master because it, it really, in general, can be a starter for so many different things. Yeah, it's the starter for the soup, but also the recipe itself can work with other meats as well. So you just learn this method and you can substitute beef with, uh, with game meat. You can substitute it with pork. So you have so many variations of it that you, you will really enjoy playing with it. Okay, good. And what do we have to look forward to in May? In May, May the 1st, it's the first Saturday, we will make my everyday bread which means it's not a fancy artisan bread, but it tastes just as good, but it's a no-need recipe. And you just mix it up, let it sit, and bake it. And it takes about five minutes of your time every day. It's five minutes active time. Of course, you have to let it sit in between. But you don't have to work on it a whole lot, and you have wonderful smell in your house, and you have homemade fresh bread or anytime you want. And as we have a lot of waiting time involved, uh, we will use it to create some traditional Hungarian spreads like kürözöt and an egg spread. And I will show you other, other ways how we usually eat bread in Hungary. And I hope you will enjoy them. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure we will. And, you know, when I'm in the rhythm of making bread, it's, it's so easy but a lot of times I just fall out of the rhythm. And mm -hmm. so, so this is a great basic loaf of bread. I've enjoyed it several times with you and I love it. And it's, and it's perfect to serve with a meal. So, and the, and the sandwich spreads would be great to, to know about too. And the other ways of serving the bread, just to have some flexibility. So it, while it, it may seem like it's just a loaf of bread, there's really so much more that could be done with it. Yes, and especially don't miss this class because you want to serve this bread with your goulash lavash the next month. Yes, and that <laughs> will be coming next. So go ahead yes. and talk about that a little bit. Yes, goulash lavash is the thing. When we, when we Hungarian hear the word goulash, goulash we think of the goulash lavash. And it's, it's this soup that's made with the same beef uh, base. And we had a lot of vegetables and potatoes and homemade noodles to it. And it's, it's a soup that we usually eat as a main course. And we, we serve some dessert after that. Maybe some, maybe turos testa or palacinta. So it's, this class series like is a little bit linked together because either we yeah. serve them with each other or we have the, the same base ingredients. Okay. Yes. And, and it'll be, all be delicious. So we'll get an opportunity to, to taste everything as we're working on it. And, uh, and then in the end, we'll be able to have some flexibility with what we make because we can always make a loaf of bread to go with our goulash lavash or even our chicken paprikash from January that we had a class there. So there's, there's a lot of great opportunity for kind of mixing and matching the different things in Hungarian cuisine. And, and it's, so it's nice to have some basic, basic recipes that have a lot of flexibility. So I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing your recipes because even though I have my own, there, there seems to be this foolproof method that you have as far as explaining it 
whether it's the technique of of weighing and measuring for those kinds of things, or even just uh, flavor combinations that your recommendations really do there. Yes, I like to provide always, always the most basic, simple recipes, because then you can go with it and you can uh, you can add your variations to it. So I, I just try to keep everything simple because I think that these uh, simple traditional meals are just the best. Yeah. And they're, you know, if people want to make them when they're simple and traditional, if if everything is super, super fancy, then it gets discouraging because it takes so much time. So it's good to really know the basics. So Exactly. So the each class is priced at $35, but if you purchase all the classes together as the spring series package, you save $20 and the package price is $120. So the classes are posted on mudyardmarketing.com and I'll have a link in the show notes. And you can, again, sign up for each of them individually, but you can do the whole series together. And if you've been in a class with Tunda before, you know how fun it can be. It's a, it's a nice grouping of people. Everybody's there for the same purpose. And it's a way to have a sense of community, even though we're all in our own kitchens, but we're together on Zoom and it's great to be able to ask questions uh, as we're in the middle of the process. So thank you, Tunde, for being a guest on the podcast again. Thank you. I'm so looking forward to spend some time with your sweet group together again. <laughs> And as always, thank you for listening. We will have the details on how to register for the classes on the HungarianLiving.com website in the show notes or head over to MudyarMarketing.com to register. And if you have any questions, be sure to give me a call at 1-800-786-7851. Have a great day. Hungarian Living is a division of Mudyar Marketing, the Hungarian store, where you can find meaningful gifts with Hungarian style. Check us out at mudyarmarketing.com. And special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Hungarian Living, please subscribe and share this podcast with your favorite Hungarian. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, email us at podcast at hungarianliving.com. We'll catch you next time.